Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Andy Twyton. And on behalf of the whole congregation, I want to welcome any friends, guests, or visitors we have with us. We are so glad that you are here. We hope that if you're visiting with us today, you might say hi in the comments so that we can welcome you directly. And I hope that everyone will take a chance to uh, greet each other and wish each other a happy Easter in the comments on Facebook and on YouTube. A few brief thank yous before we begin. I want to thank the staff and volunteers who have worked so hard to bring these services together. Thank you to Dina Hippy for her work on the bulletins and on the slides. Thank you to Wendy Ward, our director of music, for not only leading our music as our church musician, but coordinating the many cantors and musicians involved with these services. Thank you to Anders Fano for uh, mixing the sound for our music as well. And thank you to Karen in our office for coordinating worship volunteers. Thanks to Eric and Shirley Olson for setting up the, uh, the sanctuary, decorating it for Easter. At the beginning of Lent, we invited you to bury the Alleluia. During the season of Lent, we were refrain from using this word of praise uh, for the 40-day season of Lent, but then on Easter we raise the Alleluia, following the pattern of Jesus being buried and being and rising to new life. And so if you buried your Alleluia during Lent, I invite you to pull those out today, to place them prominently in your home, and uh, to maybe put them on your front door or on a window that faces the street. Find some way to praise the Lord today. And we will say Alleluia over and over today because Christ is risen. Welcome to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ has risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth. Amen. Joined to Christ with the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and the word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew us, renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, fill us, Lord, with dauntless love, set heart and will on things above, that we The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day, and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that he is the one ordained by God, as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
notes of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second lesson is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you, are hold, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. It's kind of a strange ending to the story when you think about it. Mark's ending doesn't sound as triumphant and final as many of our hymns will today. Instead of joy and celebration, the women at the tomb feel terror and amazement. And Mark leaves so many loose ends in his narrative, so many unanswered questions. For example, in Mark, there are no resurrection appearances. So we are left wondering if Jesus will really meet up with his disciples in Galilee. And there is nothing like reconciliation with Peter, like the one that you might find in John's Gospel. So we are left with only the taste of his denial in our mouths. Jesus doesn't speak Mary's name at the tomb in Mark. Jesus doesn't appear at all at the tomb. Instead, Mary, Mary, and Salome encounter an, an unusual young man in a white robe. And it gets stranger. The young man tells them to go and tell others. But instead of doing this, they run away in fear and tell no one about this experience. We're left wondering, Will they tell the others? Will they share their testimony? There is no, and they lived happily ever after, at the end of Mark. All these questions are left hanging in the air. And I understand that grammatically in the Greek as well, it's almost as if Mark stops mid-sentence in his thinking. This gospel doesn't end in an exclamation point. It ends in an ellipsis. For they were afraid, and it's like Mark writes a dot, dot, dot at the end. Maybe this leaves us wanting more. Maybe we feel like the story isn't quite over yet. Now, if you were to open your Bible to the end of Mark, you'd probably find sections labeled both the shorter ending of Mark and the longer ending of Mark. Both of these endings try to tidy things up a little and tie up some of those loose ends. The longer ad ending adds a few resurrection appearances by Jesus that are similar to the ones you'd find in the other Gospels. But you'd probably notice, at least in most Bibles, that both the shorter and the longer endings are set apart by double brackets. 
This is to indicate that these words were not found in the earliest manuscripts that we have and are therefore presumed to not be part of the original gospel. The shorter ending, as best as we can tell, was added some 300 years after the gospel was written. And the longer ending was most likely added 100 years after Mark. So in other words, some early Christian editors and copyists got to the end of Mark and thought, this can't be right. Mark forgot to finish his story. I better add some details and do it for him. But all the evidence we seem to have uh, suggests that Mark wanted to end his story like this, as if you are writing a dot, dot, dot at the end. The other Gospels tried to be a little more orderly and tie up the story of Jesus with a satisfying bow, but not Mark. He wanted to end it like this, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This doesn't bode well for my preaching theme on witness. Throughout this week, from Passion Sunday to Monday Thursday to Good Friday, I've been preaching about witness because I believe God is at work transforming us, you and me, from bystanders into witnesses. And yet here, according to Mark's version, the first witnesses of the empty tomb were too afraid to tell anyone. Aren't we supposed to go and tell everyone about Jesus to say he is alive? Isn't that kind of an important part of the witness job description? There is some irony here in the gospel as well, because if you were to read Mark's gospel from beginning to end, you'd notice how many times Jesus begged people not to tell other people about his activities. He'd heal someone and say, please don't tell anyone about this. But it seemed like the more he told them that, the more they would go and tell everyone about it. But now, in contrast, Jesus does want his followers to tell other people. But fear seizes them up. But this can't be the end of the story, can it? At some point, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, and Salome must have overcome their fear because otherwise we wouldn't know this story. But we are still forced to imagine that in Mark because it's all part of that ellipsis, that dot, dot, dot. Mark's ending is strange, but I believe the evangelist is trying to accomplish something in us. This unresolved ending pulls us off the sidelines and into the story. Mark's point seems to be this. The story of Jesus isn't over. In fact, it is just getting started. The image I have is of the to-be-continued words flashing on the screen at the end of a TV episode. Mark's ending is a cliffhanger of sorts. Mark breaks off mid-sentence in the Jesus story because he knows the story isn't over yet. He believes the story will continue in the lives who, in those who hear the good news. Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, went to the tomb expecting to bear witness to an ending. They came to care for the corpse of their dear friend. But instead of witnessing an ending, they were surprised to find themselves as witnesses of a new beginning. They were witnesses of the first day of the new creation. And maybe you will be surprised this morning, too. Too often we assume that Easter is the end of the Jesus story. The tomb was empty, and we all lived happily ever after, we might think. But Easter isn't the end. It is our beginning. Jesus isn't our past. He is our future. Jesus isn't stuck behind us on a cross or in a tomb somewhere. Instead, he goes ahead of us into the future and promises to meet us there. 
The messenger at the tomb said as much. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This story is to be continued. It's to be continued in the witness of Mary Magdalene, Mary, and Salome. It is to be continued in the witness of Peter and the disciples throughout the ages. It is to be continued here, today, with us, now. Now the screen and the phone are much too impersonal for the message I need you to hear this morning. I kind of wish I could line you up one by one because I'm worried there is one of you uh, who's out there thinking that this applies to other people but not to me. Because I want to say to each one of you individually this. The story of Jesus is to be continued in you. Jesus lives and is waiting to meet you. He goes ahead of you and you will see him. You will see the risen Lord in the gifts of word and the Eucharist and baptism. You will see the risen Lord in the faces of your church family, the living body of Christ. You will see the risen Lord in places and among the people you would least expect, in the poor and the outcast. Jesus goes ahead of you. Now go and find him there. When Mark ends with fear and an ellipsis, it's like he is daring us to finish the story. We are bystanders no more, because like the women at the tomb, we are invited to overcome the fears that limit our testimony. The story of Jesus is not over. You will see him. Dare to be a witness today. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Jesus is living, alleluia. Christ has arisen to set us free, alleluia, to him praises be. Jesus is living, let us all sing, he reigns triumphant, heavenly king. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy, death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. And now we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection, Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life work at resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw them together of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve, especially Clem, Jane, Todd, Bill, Joyce, William, Maxine, Myron, Denia, Gala, David, Chris, Judy, Charlotte, Judy, Janice, Karen, Leshmi, Dennis, Chad, Larry, Darlene, Michelle, Joan, Haley, Bob, Megan, and all we name now, aloud or silently. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. 
Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take some time today to exchange a greeting of peace with each other today. Comments in the comments section, pick up the phone and make a phone call, send a text, send an email, find some way to exchange the peace and joy of Christ today. Peace be with you all, and happy Easter from Washington Park here in Chicago. Blessings to all of you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you all. Till we meet. Wishing all the members of Trinity and families for Trinity a very happy Easter. Enjoy the day of the Lord. May God bless you all. See you in church. Peace, Peace be with, with you. Happy Easter. Boing. Happy Easter. Peace be with you. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Offering is that part of the service when we give thanks for all of God's blessings in our life and respond with generosity and gratitude. And so I want to remind you of the ways that you can continue to support the mission and ministry here at Trinity, one of the ways we can participate in God's mission. You can make an offering on our website at tlcmsn.org and click on online giving, or you can send in an offering to our mailing address, which is 1904 Winnebago Street. Thank you so much for your generosity and your faithfulness.
Even though we are physically distanced this morning, we believe that the Holy Spirit has the power to continue to gather us in these new ways around the gifts and presence of Christ in word and sacrament. And so we celebrate Holy Communion this Easter. If you have bread or crackers, wine or grape juice on hand, I invite you to gather those elements as we celebrate. The risen Christ showed up in unexpected places. He showed up behind closed doors. He showed up on the lake shore. And he shows up today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now, gathered together with your church family this morning, you are invited to commune in your homes. Take the elements you have gathered and share them with each other, saying the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are not with other people, then receive these elements as a gift and my voice as a voice from outside yourself offering you this gift in the name of Jesus, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you do not have the elements on hand, or if you are electing to fast at this time, then receive this blessing. Christ is with you in the gifts of the Word and Christian community. Jesus loves you, forgives your sins. You are God's beloved child. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.